All right, let's dive in. Looks like today we're tackling a whole chapter about water from a biology textbook. Oh, wow. Getting back to basics. Yeah. You know, water is something yeah. we see every day, but I bet you there's a ton we can learn about it that'll blow our minds. Right. Like how this one simple molecule is behind so much complexity in the world. Well, for starters, ice floats. We all know that, but why? Okay, so uh, it all comes down to water structure. You mean those hydrogen bonds we keep hearing about? Exactly. Remember how those bonds are constantly breaking and reforming in liquid water? Yeah, it's like a molecular dance party. I like that. But when water freezes, those hydrogen bonds lock the molecules into this fixed pattern. So they can't move around as freely anymore. Right. And that pattern, it actually takes up more space than when the molecules are all jumbled up in liquid water. So the ice becomes less dense than the water. Precisely. That's why it floats. And it's a good thing it does. Yeah, imagine if lakes and oceans froze from the bottom up. That would be a disaster for aquatic life. No more fish, no more coral reefs. Plus, the ice on the surface acts like insulation, keeping the water below warmer. So creatures can survive even when it's freezing outside. The chapter mentions ringed seals. They depend on Arctic sea ice for hunting and breeding. Wow, so even those seals are impacted by water's weird properties. And of course, climate change is threatening that whole balance with the melting ice. Yeah, it's a reminder that even small changes can have a huge impact. Speaking of impact, let's talk about cohesion and adhesion. Oh yeah, how water molecules stick together and to other things. It's all thanks to those hydrogen bonds again. Cohesion gives water its surface tension. Like that invisible film that lets bugs walk on water. Exactly. And adhesion lets water cling to other surfaces, like the inside of a plant's stem. Working together, they can pull water upwards, even against gravity. It's how the tallest trees get water all the way to their leaves. It's mind-blowing, like a natural water pump. Water is full of surprises. Speaking of which, have you ever noticed how long it takes to boil water? Yeah, it can feel like forever. That's because water has a high specific heat meaning it takes a lot of energy to raise its temperature. So it's not just about how hot something is, but how much heat energy it has. Right. Temperature measures how fast molecules are moving. Heat is the total energy. So a boiling pot of water and a cold swimming pool can have the same temperature. But the pool contains way more heat because there's so much more water. And this relates to hydrogen bonds again. You got it. It takes a lot of energy to break those bonds before the water molecules can move faster and heat up. So water's like a heat sponge, absorbing energy to keep its temperature stable. That's a great way to put it. This property is why oceans help regulate our planet's climate. They can absorb so much heat without drastic changes in temperature. Creating a more stable environment for life. So far we've got floating ice, water-defying gravity, and a built-in thermostat. What else could this amazing molecule have in store for us? Let's find out. Well, let's talk about how water is like this incredible dissolver. Oh yeah, it can mix with so many things. Think of water as a host throwing a giant party for molecules. Okay, so the molecules are the guests. Exactly. The ones that dissolve in water, those are the salutes. And the whole party scene, that's the solution. Right. Everything all mixed up together evenly. Like if I make coffee, the coffee grounds are the salute and the water is the solvent. Perfect. And that cup of joe you end up with is the solution. It's crazy to think about all this stuff dissolved in our bodies too. Oh, absolutely. Blood, the fluid inside our cells, it's mostly water with all sorts of stuff dissolved in it. So water is kind of the stage for all these important reactions to happen. On. You could say that. Now, not everything gets an invitation to this party. Right. Some things just don't mix with water, like oil. We call those substances hydrophobic, water-fearing. Hydrophobic, that's a cool word. And this idea is super important for understanding cells. How so? Well, cell membranes are made of these special molecules called phospholipids. Phospholipids? They have a head that loves water, hydrophilic, and a tail that hates water. So the heads face outwards towards the water, and the tails hide inside. Exactly. Creating a barrier between the inside and outside of the cell. It's like a water power shield. Pretty much. Now back to those substances that do like to party with water. The salutes, right. We need a way to measure how much of them are dissolved in a solution. That's where molarity comes in, isn't it? You got it. It tells us the concentration of a salute. To be honest, molarity always confused me a bit. Think of it like making lemonade. The more lemonade mix you add, the stronger it tastes. Exactly. More mix means a higher concentration of the salute and a stronger flavor. So molarity is a way to put a number on that concentration. Right. It tells us how many moles of salute are in one liter of solution. Oh, hold on. Moles? Like the little animals that dig in the garden? Uh-huh. Not quite. 
A mole is just a specific number of molecules. It's a huge number, right? Avogadro's number. You know it. It's kind of like a chemist's dozen, just way bigger. Instead of counting every single molecule, we use moles to represent a big bunch of them. So if you dissolve one mole of sugar in one liter of water, you have a one molar solution. Okay, so two moles of sugar would be a two molar solution. You got it. And this idea of molarity is important in all sorts of chemistry and biology. It's like having a universal measuring system for the molecular world. Now that we have that down, how about we talk about something we touched on earlier? What's that? pH. You know, how acidic or basic a solution is. Right, and it's all about those hydrogen ions floating around. Exactly. We measure pH on a scale from 0 to 14. With 7 being neutral. Right, right. like pure water. Anything below 7 is acidic, above 7 is basic. So lemon juice is acidic and baking soda is basic. You got it. And living things need to keep their pH pretty stable. Like our blood needs to stay around 7.4. That's right, slightly basic. And... Our bodies have these things called buffers to help with that. Buffers. What are those? They're like the pH police. They keep things balanced. So they can adjust the amount of hydrogen ions to keep the pH from swinging too much. Exactly. But if the pH gets too far out of whack, even buffers can't keep up. Like with that condition called acidosis, when the blood gets too acidic. That can cause all sorts of problems. Breathing issues, heart problems. It's not good. So maintaining the right pH is super important for our health. Absolutely. And it's not just our bodies. pH imbalances in the environment can be a big issue too. Like with acid rain harming lakes and streams. Exactly. And then there's ocean acidification, a growing problem. That's when the ocean absorbs too much carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, right? Which makes the water more acidic. This is a huge threat to marine life. Especially for creatures that build shells from calcium carbonate. Like corals and shellfish? Their shells literally start to dissolve. It's like we're slowly erasing their homes. It's a scary thought. It shows how what we do on land can impact the entire ocean. Everything is connected, and yeah. sometimes in ways we don't even realize. That's a great point to end on. We need to be much more aware of how our actions affect water. Yeah, it's kind of alarming when you think about it. It really is. And it's not just about pH either. There are so many things that threaten water quality. Oh, absolutely. Like pollution. That's a big one, right? All the industrial waste, agricultural runoff. Even sewage. All that stuff can contaminate water with chemicals and bacteria. It's sad to think about all those pollutants ending up in our rivers and oceans. And it's not just a problem far away, you know. It happens everywhere. Even here? Yeah. Leaky storage tanks, fertilizer from lawns and farms, even medications flush down the toilet. Wow, I never thought about that. It all adds up. And then on top of pollution, we have water scarcity to worry about. Water scarcity. Yeah. In many places, we're using up groundwater faster than it can be replenished. Like draining the planet's reserves. Kind of, yeah. It can lead to shortages, land sinking, even conflict over water rights. Yikes. That sounds serious. It is. And it can damage ecosystems that rely on those water sources. We really need to take water conservation more seriously, don't we? Absolutely. We have to start treating water like the precious resource it is. What are some things people can do to make a difference? Well, there's a lot we can do even at home. Fixing leaks, choosing water efficient appliances. Taking shorter showers. Exactly. Being mindful of how much water we use in our daily lives. Every little bit helps. It really does. And then beyond that, we need to push for bigger changes. Like what? Supporting policies for sustainable water management, investing in better infrastructure. Research into new technologies too, right? Definitely. We need solutions for treatment and conservation. It sounds like a huge challenge. It is, but we can't ignore it. Protecting water isn't just about having enough to drink. It's about the health of the entire planet. Exactly. All the plants and animals that rely on clean water. We've seen in this deep dive how crucial water is for every living thing. From the smallest bacteria to the biggest whale, we all depend on it. I don't think I'll ever look at a glass of water the same way again. Me neither. It's truly amazing stuff. And we need to do everything we can to protect it. Absolutely. It's the lifeblood of our planet. Well, I think that about wraps up our deep dive into the world of water. It's been a fascinating journey. Full of surprises and a newfound respect for this simple molecule. I hope our listeners feel the same way. And that they're inspired to learn more and take action to conserve this precious resource. Because every drop counts. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, stay curious.